This acoustic guitar is made up of tens of thousands of matchsticks. What is that mystery instrument on the Doors Alabama song? Who is Luther Oliver and why did he make guitars out of old drums? My name's Shane Spiel and I wrote the book on homemade instruments. Now I'm searching for the stories behind the most unique instruments in my collection. This is Sound Searcher. Today, we're going to explore this, the Little Joe, a mysterious instrument from 1903. Little Joe is a four-string instrument that looks like it was designed with a French curve. I'm absolutely fascinated with this. It's only got four strings and it's only got two frets, which means it can only play three chords. I bought this one on eBay for $40. The soundboard's cracked and it's in pretty beat up condition. However, there's enough of it surviving for us to study and maybe make our own. The Sears catalog said, the little Joe cannot be excelled for performing at dances, picnics, masquerades, and parties. We definitely need to make one of these. The instrument was invented and patented by Carl E. Brown of Columbus, Ohio in 1903. Prior to this contraption, Brown had patented a 10 string acoustic guitar in 1896 that just may or may not have been the precursor to the modern steel string 12 string guitar. Hmm. He also made this, the Harpo chord. This is an unusual harmonica zither hybrid from 1899. Harmonica goes there, you play it, and you strum with your fingers. Speaking of the harp accord, one journalist described it as an instrument of torture invented by an Ohio man. Carl E. Brown didn't care what the journalist said and continued to build a factory to make these and Little Joe's in Columbus, Ohio. Just like the harp accord, the Little Joe's appeal was that it was shipped with a 20 reed harmonica attached to the very end where you would play it. You're supposed to somehow play a harmonica here and strum at the same time. The clip for the harmonica is gone on mine, but you get all of this entertainment for 95 cents. Hey, we often joke that the most popular songs are just three chords. Well, the little Joe depended on it. Hey, if your song had more than three Louie Louie chords, you were out of luck. You didn't need to play that song anyway. The only way we're gonna get to really know this instrument is to build one ourselves. Was this instrument even worth making back in 1903? Let's do it. Let's go out to the wood shop. I actually dug up the original patent, but unfortunately it only showed just the shape of the instrument. In fact, all the details went into these long paragraphs of just describing the curves of the shape of the instrument. So we're gonna use the antique as our template and our guide. The Little Joe has a centerpiece of wood that is the neck, and it also is the entire rim of the body. There are two very thin, in fact, it's 1 16th inch thin pieces of wood for the soundboard and for the back of the instrument. There's no bracing inside this thing. In fact, that's why it's split and sunk in. So we got this one piece of wood, we got the front and the back, and then we have this little piece, this abbreviated piece of fretboard right there. I'm gonna have a little fun and use some salvaged wood to make my own. For the center piece, which is the neck and the rim of the body, I'm using a piece of an old piano that I salvaged. This is the front board. My God, people, you see those free pianos all the time on Craigslist and Facebook? They have so much good wood with them. If you can get someone to help you get a piano and take it apart, you've got some fantastic antique wood. So I'm gonna use this. I, I think it may be Poplar. Um, this was from the Weaver Piano Company, York, Pennsylvania. And I'm gonna need some thin wood for the soundboard and the back. Now, this was solid wood. This is probably birch, like a lot of the old Stella guitars were using solid birch. I don't have birch, but I have an old hollow core door. Ugh. This ought to be enough to give me a soundboard and a back. So I'm going to mill down both of these pieces of wood, and then we'll get to tracing the original Little Joe and build one. Got my CB Giddy shop apron on. <laughs> Well, that was not what I was expecting. This is a hollow core door from the 1950s, so it's not completely hollow. 
I am not going to deal with breaking off all these pieces to make a soundboard. Time to find a different plywood source. Time to run to Lowe's. All right, I'm back from Lowe's. Lowe's is always a crap shoot, and all they had was this quarter inch birch plywood. That's pretty thick, um, and that's not going to resonate well. Um, but in searching throughout my shed here, I did find this. This was actually a cast off from a kit being developed by Papa's Boxes. They were doing cigar box guitar kits way back in like 2008, 2010. Um, and they were doing stuff out of solid wood. So I never threw this piece away. And it looks like it's big enough for the soundboard. Now I need to be very careful and do a little bracing on this because this could split easily. If you're gonna build your own, you're probably gonna use birch plywood. Some Hobby Lobbies and other craft stores will have birch plywood big enough. You're gonna need about a 12 by 12 piece of birch plywood, hopefully 1 8 inch thick for the face and for the back. Okay, I've removed the original tailpiece from the Little Joe. Now, by the way, this tailpiece looks like it's just a mandolin tailpiece from the old bullback mandolins. If I'm working on an instrument, I always keep all of its parts in a separate little container so I don't lose them. So I'm going to get this. I'm going to take the strings off. These are definitely not the original strings. These are guitar strings. And if this was a company that was making zithers, then they were using loop end strings like zithers for this as well. So whoever had this used it a lot and changed the strings to guitar strings at some point. Taking these off, going to trace it on here. Then I'm also going to trace the body on this piece and the other piece I just bought from Lowe's. I put a thick wood blade in here to really go through this piano wood. Once I get to the thinner stuff, I'll change the blades out. Hey, I'm cutting the soundboard, but I'm definitely going to go outside the line so that I have room to sand it when I put it against the finished piece of the core. Okay, we've got the rough cuts. We've got the soundboard, we've got the core, and we've got the back. Now, one thing I need to do is I need to cut out the inside of the core. I'm going to cut out a circle. I'm going to bring it in about a half inch the whole way around for a nice little circle here. That way when I put the top and the back on, it'll be acoustic because this will vibrate and there will be air in here. And the way I determined it was a half inch is I sort of fit my finger in there and feeling from one side to the other, it is roughly about a half inch all the way around. The front and back will hang over it a little bit, but I'll take a sander and I'm making everything flush. All right, there we go. There is the body. I didn't have to take my time for the inside. Nobody's going to see that. But if you noticed, I left a little extra wood right here because that's where the tailpiece is going to go. And it'll give some room for screws to go in there. So I just gave a little more beef for that. We're going to have the soundboard in the back. <laughs> All right, we have the original Little Joe here, and notice the sound hole is positioned right in the center, so when the strings come down, it's in the center of them. Well, this is not a normal shape, uh, so I'm going to need to make sure that when I attach my soundboard to the core here, that whenever I have a sound hole, it's not like off-center. I, yeah, I can almost guarantee you when it's done, it'll be a little, little off-center because I know me. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to only glue the soundboard to the core so that I can figure out the exact placement of the sound hole and also put a little bit of bracing in here and get it ready. Then I can take the back, put it on there and uh, 
We'll clean up the edges with a router or with a sander, and then we'll go forward in making the fretboard. But you know what, as I'm sitting here holding this up to you, I realized this needs to be completely sanded. Okay, sanded, got it done. All right, now I'm gonna glue the soundboard to it. You can never have too many clamps. Okay, I've got the soundboard glued to the core. Now I'm gonna actually take my fretboard this is a blank CB Giddy mahogany fretboard. I'm going to place it on here and try to figure out where the fretboard's going to go. See, because the original has the abbreviated two fret fretboard. But in order for me to line up the nut, the sound hole, the bridge, I'm going to use this long piece here and using some measurements going back and forth. What the center will be, I'm going to mark some lines and I'm going to use a floating bridge on this so that I can move it around and really get the best intonation. I've got my outline for the fretboard and I figured out where the sound hole is gonna go. On the original, it has a two inch diameter sound hole. For mine, I'm gonna go a little bit smaller because I have this really nice inch and a half Forstner bit, and it's gonna give me a nice little clean cut for the sound hole. I'm gonna need to put some wood behind here to support it, and uh, so I have the piece that I actually cut out of here. So don't throw this piece away if you're gonna make this. Boom, like that. Nice, perfect sound hole. So let's put a couple braces on here to make sure this wood won't split. Again, if you're using like eighth inch birch plywood, you probably won't need to brace this much. However, I use this solid wood here and uh, it may split. For bracing, all I did was take a one by two piece of pine, nice soft pine and cut a little strip and shave them down into two ladder braces here. One that is pretty much right under the bridge or close to it. So with the tension of the bridge pushing on it, this will add some support. And the second one up here, because I didn't know if there would be splits like in this, there's some splits around. So now I'm just gonna glue these in. And by the way, I'm just using Gorilla Wood glue. Uh, so many people use tight bond and such. Um, I have really no idea what the difference between glues are. This was on sale, so I bought it. Uh, if you have a favorite glue, post it in your comments. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> the braces are dry, and now I need to glue the back onto here. But before I do so, I realized there's a sound hole here and I wanted to put something you could see in the sound hole, you know, and I first thought maybe my signature or something, but I had an even cooler idea. I took one of the old advertisements for the Little Joe and this one is when it was priced at $1. And I'm gonna put that so you can see it in here. I have the back and I drilled a small hole at the bottom and here, and they go into here, and that's just so I could put a couple tacks and position this so it doesn't move. I figured out where you'll see through the sound hole. I'm gonna put a little glue and put that ad right there. Then I'm gonna glue the back onto the guitar. It's time to make the abbreviated fretboard. We only have two frets here. And these frets are located, if this were a full scale length, from the nut here to the whole way to the bridge here, it would be 14 inches. So I looked up a fret calculator online for a 14 inch scale length. And I wrote those numbers down. Then I figured where the fifth fret was. Um, I skipped the sixth fret and then the seventh fret. And I have a piece of fretboard you know, and instead of just copying exactly what's on here I did my own so that the fretting was as accurate as it could be I just cut a piece off of a CB Giddy blank fretboard so now I'm going to use a fret saw I'm going to slot those and then I'm going to add some frets 
These strings are not going to be big guitar strings. So I'm going to use narrow low fret wire. It's kind of like for a mandolin. Usually I use a fretting file to go across the whole neck with such a tiny fretboard. I'm actually going to put fretboard on the side of this and use this to get any of the edges. Going to use the bevel file the same way. How about that for a fret job? <laughs> Now I need to get some parts, so I'm going on to cbgiddy.com. I know I'm going to need a nut, and Giddy has these bone nuts for concert ukulele, and I think they're going to fit. So being that it's only $3.99, I'm going to get myself one of those. It's going to need a floating bridge, and I've actually worked with CB Giddy in developing these floating bridges, so I know how good they're going to be. So I'm choosing the Padoque which is this beautiful orange mahogany looking uh, wood. And I'm getting it in the K style, which is long and flat. I need a tailpiece. And so I got their simple four string classic cigar box guitar tailpiece. I know I'm gonna have to be doing my own bending and shaping of it to fit the little Joe, but I think this will work. And finally, I need some classic tuners. I need some something that really makes it pop. And these are new from CB Giddy, the Piedmont tuners. These things look just like old 1930s guitar tuners. So I'm getting a set of these. Again, you cannot beat the price, $13.99 right there. So I'm gonna add all these into my cart and get them shipped to me. They'll probably be here in two days. <music> Now that I got my parts from CB Giddy, I am trying to figure out how these beautiful Piedmont tuners, these things are drop dead gorgeous. Uh, trying to figure out how they're gonna fit on the headstock. So I've got the little Joe backwards and I am just positioning these. Now what I did was I took the shafts off so that I could use the holes to them as the templates. And what I'm gonna try to do is line up the screw holes with each other so that I have nice evenly spaced tuners here. I'll have three here and then one on the opposite side. And I've got the tuner spacing set up for the headstock. I'm gonna drill this out. But before I do that, I wanted to show you something. I've actually tweaked my wood shop since the last time I recorded a video. As you can tell, my t-shirts change. I do a little and then you gotta let it go and glue. Well, this is another day. After doing a lot of sanding on the little Joe, um, I had pulled out my spindle sander here and I used to keep it underneath. And I was realizing in my shop, there's a few tools that I would store away that I really needed. Um, my router, I have my router, my spindle sander. I got a new stand for my scroll saw. And so I spent a couple hours and just moved things out, reorganized my shop again. Um, and now I have a lot more space. So that's the thing, let your shop work for you. And if it's not set up right, even after years of using it, redo it. Who's gonna tell you no? All right, let's get to drilling these tuners. Then I'm gonna stain this thing and the tuner holes will allow me to hang it up. There we go. So I'm gonna stain this and I have some leftover English chestnut from when I did my floors in my house. And I have some dark walnut. I'm wondering if I should go dark walnut on the fretboard and the English chestnut on the body. I think I'm gonna try that, see if I uh, can be clean enough to give those a little bit of a, a contrast the way the original is. So the stain came out pretty nice, especially on the face. The back's okay. It covered up some of that really crappy plywood from Lowe's. 
And then I'm just using some simple polyurethane on this. Other people are very particular about what they use for their finish. I'm just gonna use some polyurethane. I'm gonna give it a couple coats today. We're gonna make sure that this sound hole is plugged up so my little paper label inside doesn't get it doesn't run or anything because this was just printed on a computer. While I'm letting the polyurethane dry in between coats, there's something else I need to work on. In the original Little Joe, as you can see there, there is a decal here. And this was most likely a water slide decal of some sort. You can see it clear in the original ad. In researching old catalogs and photos, I tried to figure out what they were trying to go for in this pick guard. Why was it that shape? They used sort of the shape of an old bullback mandolin. Those bullback mandolins would have a pick guard inlaid right into the soundboard. But wait, there was another historic guitar that had a mandolin pick guard inlaid into it. And that would have been Stevie Ray Vaughan's Lenny Strat. The Lenny Strat had a mandolin pickguard embedded into the back end of the face of the Strat. After doing some Google searches, I found that pickguard. That gives me a great shape to go by in order to cut out a pickguard for my little Joe. CB Giddy has these self-adhesive pickguard sheets. There's Pearl, there's a, a brown tortoise, and a reddish tortoise. And uh, I've been putting them on the face here. I don't think red does it. Brown sort of has a, the 1920s look. But when I put this up there, the perloid, that is a thing. Um, so I think I'm going to give it a perloid pick guard. And this stuff, you simply cut it with scissors. And then I'm going to take some sandpaper and round the edges so they're really nice and smooth. And once the guitar is done, then we can put the pick guard on and then just peel off the back and stick it on there. So I'm going to trace this onto this and use a regular pair of scissors to cut it out. This is the part in the show where the polyurethane is drying. So let's do a little behind the scenes. Roll them. As I'm prepping the harp accord uh, for this video demo, I'm tuning it up for the very first time since I've purchased it. Inside it has directions for tuning it using the harmonica that comes with it. I need to be very careful with this because the more I bring this up to tension, the more the soundboard, as you can see, it warps like this. I need to be very careful. We also have a split here. So I'm gonna see if I can get this up to tension. Well, as I'm tuning this, I realize I don't have the right harmonica. I have a C harmonica, C harmonica and not a G, but here's uh, how it would sound. The harp accord would just give three chords, that's it. Three chords, just like the little Joe. By the way, the Harmony Instrument Company copied the harp accord later on in the 1950s and 1960s, and they created this, the Hill Country Harp. Much like the original harp accord, which had bass, chord, bass, chord, in three, this had four. It had four bass strings, and push buttons instead of just chords that allowed you to play four chords. Yes, a harmonica was also on here for you to play it as you tried to hold this thing. And there's a better look at these typewriter keys. And these would just fret down on the right places to create the chord changes. And they got the idea for the typewriter keys from the Indian bubble terang or the Indian banjo, but that's for another episode. Got the fretboard glued on, and I've also got the nut glued on. I did my calculations and I figured out exactly where the first fret should be corresponding with the nut and glued those on. I spent a lot of time making sure to get things straight. I used the old piece of um, 
fretboard scrap that I had. And it, it took me a while, but I got it glued on. Hopefully this is exactly where it needs to go. Now I need to get this tailpiece on here but I need to make sure that it is in the right position because the original Little Joe is circular and it doesn't have any lines to it. I've been eyeballing a lot of stuff. I am using the string trick where you put a string through the low string of the tailpiece and the high, okay? And then I'm gonna take these like this. I'm gonna get my bridge here and I am going to run the low string and high string right at the nut where they would pass over and what this enables me to do and I'll see if I can't move it like this is to move this back and forth to center it hold on that slipped out there so I can move this back and forth. I don't even need this here to make sure I get it exactly center. I want it to be centered on the fretboard and centered in the sound hole as well. So this is how I'm measuring it. Then we can get to putting the tuners on and my very special harmonica holder. I've got the tailpiece on. As you can see, I cut the back of it off and made sure to smooth that. And I made two pick guards for this because I'm still trying to figure out which one looks best, the brown or the pearl. And I'm so happy with how the wood came out. I think I'm going to just not even use the pick guards. I'm gonna go with that. I have started working on the tuners here and I made a mistake as I was doing the tuners. I put them a little too close. So I had to doctor up the back plates. I used my Dremel to do that. Let's get the last tuner on here. There we go. The strings I've chosen for this are the highest four strings of a light gauge acoustic guitar string pack. So you have your 0.022, 0 0.016, 0 0.013, and 0 0.012. You don't have to have the exact gauge as I do, but just have the D, G, B, and E strings from a light gauge pack. So there we go, all four strings are on. I had to use my belt sander sanding eraser <laughs> to prop it up here, but hey, that worked. So now we take the bridge. This is a floating bridge from CB Giddy, and I haven't reduced the size of it at all. It is full height. Hopefully that'll work. And we're gonna gently put it underneath here, paying attention to string spacing. And uh, I know I need to move it back because I had some light pencil marks I did. Let's get this tuned up. I've got my tuner here. And I know that the tuning should be C, E, G, C. So let's try to make that happen. Oh, the sound. This is the magic moment when you first string up an instrument and you hear it sing out one string, the very first string. It's loud, it's clear, it's awesome. I'm getting a dead note here. So this second string is having a problem with the break angle, going from the nut down to the tuner it gives it a little buzz. This string needs to be pulled back a little. 
And Leo Fender had the same problem with his Stratocasters and Telecasters whenever he had the straight headstock. So he created a string tree. So I have a poor man's string tree, which is a screw, where the head is round on top, flat on the bottom. What I'm going to do is put this right beside the string. The string will run underneath it, and I'll pull it down, which will give that string tension. And I just need to have it right here and pull down some. There we go, now it pulls the string down and gives a nice loud ring on that string. I have one final touch. I need to have something to hold the harmonica on at the end like the original. So I'm using one of these paper clamps and taking the arms off, I drill the hole into here and I'm just gonna simply put it right here on the headstock. Here it is, all strung up, the strings have stretched. I've taken some time to make sure to get this floating bridge right. As you know, it's a little cockeyed, but that's what happens when you're trying to get the proper intonation, is sometimes the bass side is down and the treble side is up. And for this, for the strings that I chose, that's just how the bridge looks. Now, how does it sound? People, I can't get over how loud this is. It has such a vibrant sound. Um, the question I had going into this was, is it worth it to build this? And I can tell you, this thing just, it is so much better than I thought it would be. One thing I can't get used to is the harmonica. I am not a harmonica player. Wow, where's the old one at? Here we go, right there. There is the old and the new. I'm so glad I did not put the pick guard on there. It just has, look at this, it's beautiful. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. It was this English chestnut that I used. The stain, man, that was the right stain for it. And then having the walnut there. The solid soundboard makes all the difference. And, and my friend Louis Lamana told me where to get more solid wood like this. Look for broken old Stella guitars. Stellas and harmonies. The ones made with solid birch tops and backs. If the guitar cannot be repaired, then just gently take the top off, take the back off, clean up where the braces are, and you have wood that you could use, especially for the soundboard. The back is stiff here, but it, it, this is where most of the projection is. It's a little tough to do full finger on here because my thumb wants to be holding right behind the neck, and that is where <laughs> the cutaway is. Sounds a little out of tune where I'm really smashing it anyway. Every instrument is just a little different, but for this, I didn't have to do any adjustments to the CB Giddy floating bridge, and I didn't have to do any adjustments to the bone ukulele nut that goes up there. And wow, just what, what an awesome finish. The positioning of the ad in the sound hole is perfect, 
If you look at it on, it's a little crooked, but as you're playing it, that is actually where it should be. Everything is nice and lined up. Using the string technique on here really got the bridge in proper alignment with the fretboard, with the sound hole, just nailed that. Sound Searcher, there we go. I brought the little Joe back from the dead. Wow, a totally forgotten instrument, forgotten in time, brought back, 1903. That's like 121 years ago this thing was brought out. I had a lot of fun messing with the little Joe, but I started to wonder if it really had a lot of music to it. That is, until I took it to my Cigar Box Guitar Meetup. We get together every second Saturday to hang out, to show each other the instruments that we've built, to swap building secrets. And my friend, Louis LaMana, never fails to amaze me. He said that he knew this instrument only played three chords in the key of C, so he prepared a song to jam with me on my little Joe. Now he has this handmade instrument called a Bugatia, and we'll get into that in a later episode. But the song he prepared was Snoopy versus the Red Baron, the perfect song in the key of C, three chords and the truth. My name's Shane Spiel. This is The Little Joe. Yes. Thank you for joining me. Uh, hopefully I will have more episodes after this. I do want to thank Patrick Post, Big Jim Jones, and Louis LaMana for all the great footage. Thanks to everyone at the Cigar Box Guitar Meetup in Central Pennsylvania. And if you want a tracing of The Little Joe so you can build your own, get it at CigarBoxGuitars.com. Look for the article on the Little Joe. My name's Shane Spiel. Now I need to go find a masquerade to play at. Mm -hmm.